This is Selma Schimmel for The Group Room. We're in Chicago at ASCO, and we are now joined by Dr. Gilles Sal, who is a professor of hematology at the University of Lyon in France. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Let's talk a little bit about lymphoma in general and then the indolent lymphoma. Well, if we um, see what has been presented during this meeting regarding uh, lymphoma, I think um, there were two more specific topics that had been uh, uh, addressed. One is the topic of indolent lymphoma. Indolent lymphoma is probably half of the lymphoma cases. It does occur uh, in patients of all ages, and we do consider that this type of lymphoma is usually incurable in advanced stage. However, we have made a lot of progresses in the last uh, decade, and patients will have uh, a survival exceeding 12, 15 years. So the question of the optimal treatment of this patient is more and more important regarding the best treatment approach to control the disease, to provide long-term results, and to avoid any short and long-term toxicities. There were at least three presentations given during this meeting regarding the first-line treatment of patients with follicular lymphoma, which is the most common subtype of indolent lymphoma. Uh, two presentations were related to the best chemotherapy regimen that is given to patients when they do need a chemotherapy. These chemotherapy regimen are usually given in combination with rituximab, and the classical combination chemotherapy are called RCVP, common old one, are chop a little bit more aggressive. There have been combination chemotherapy containing fludarabine, and more recently, bendamustine. So what we heard during the, this meeting were two important randomized studies. One was carried on by our, our colleague from Italy, and was a comparison of our chop RCVP, and R with fludarabine and mitoxantron. The result did show that in terms of response rate, these regimen were equal. In terms of control of the disease, our CHOP was a little bit superior to our CVP, but that on the long run, the overall survival was similar. But uh, one important message from this uh, uh, trial was that the combination using fludabine was too toxic. And I think that's an important message to know that we do have some efficient regimen, but some of them are too toxic and should be avoided. What we heard today during the plenary session was another trial, which is important, conducted by a group in Germany, which compare rituximab and bendamustine, which is an old drug of chemotherapy coming back at a global scale. It was first developed in Germany in 1963. And comparing that to RCHOP, which is the most commonly used regimen in the US and in part of Europe. And the results presented by Dr. Rommel uh, indicated that the disease control was better with the use of mendamustine plus rituximab as compared uh, to CHOP plus rituximab. I uh, thought so the toxicity of mendamustine plus rituximab was much lower. These results were noteworthy. That's the reason they are presented in the plenary session. They may not be preliminary because they have been presented already, but they are still follow-up that is quite short, four years. So in terms of long-term toxicity, we may want to verify how this result hold. But I think this is an important news for patient and physician, indicating that a standard treatment in first line could be represented by rituximab and damistine, providing results that are at least equivalent or probably better than our job from some subset of patients. We've been talking about indolent lymphoma what does indolent mean exactly? Indolent lymphoma is a lymphoma that um, develop insidiously, slowly. Many patients are diagnosed with very few symptoms and may carry a node for a couple of months, couple of years. Some patients have a very quiet disease and in some areas of the world, these patients are not immediately treated and uh, essentially submitted what we call the wait 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 waiting, waiting approach. I thought this has been discussed and the interest of using drugs such as rituximab frontline for this patient is still debatable and we, we had deba debated that also during this meeting. Today, what is the standard of care? 
The standard of care when we discuss immediate intervention is rather a combination of chemotherapy plus rituximab, although maybe for some selected patients you may re use rituximab alone. And the choice of the chemotherapy, as I discussed earlier on, could be CVP, CHOP, or bandamustine, with more and more arguments to use bandamustine as the backbone for the chemotherapy. So when you go home, what happens now to the uh, study? What's the next phase? Well, what's the next phase is the possibility to discuss the use of new agents that will eventually led us to put chemotherapy away. And that was an important message during this meeting that was presented yesterday in the session, which is a combination of agents acting in the immune system that may provide results that are comparable to those achieved with chemotherapy. Dr. Leonard from Cornell University presented a study performed in the United States comparing the use of lenalidomide an agent that has been used in multiple myeloma, um, and lenalidomide in combination plus rituximab, the anti-C20 antibody that is most widely used. And what this study shows is that the combination of both agents provided a response of 75% in patients with relapsing follicular lymphoma, with about 30% of the patient achieving a complete response, which was higher in this combination arm as opposed to the control arm with lenalidomide alone, and which appear to be superior of what we achieve when we use rituximab alone, which is another option when we treat patients with indolent lymphoma at time of relapse. So what this study shows is that the efficacy of this combination of drugs, which are not chemotherapy agents, is important. And what we are doing now at a global level is a study, which we call Relevance, uh, where we will compare the standard approach, chemotherapy plus rituximab, versus this new approach, which is a combination of lenalidomide plus rituximab. This study has just started both in the United States and in Europe, and it would take a couple of years to see whether these approaches are equivalent or eventually if we can drop chemotherapy, which I think will be some good news for the patients. So viewers that are interested in getting more information about the trial, whether they're in Europe mm -hmm. or whether they're in America, mm -hmm. this is a discussion they need to have with their hematologist or oncologist. Yes, I could have a discussion with the hematologist and oncologist. There are many centers that are open for accrual in the United States. It's called Relevance, and there are many centers open in Europe. And what's the criteria? Well, it's the criteria to enter this trial is follicular lymphoma, in need of cytotoxic therapy defined by what we call tumor burden. Mm -hmm. So patients have a high tumor burden and we feel that these patients do deserve to have usually chemotherapy plus rituximab, but here the patients are randomized between the standard of care and these new treatment options combination of lenalidomide plus rituximab. How many countries are involved? We plan to involve eight to ten countries. Right now we are open in essentially USA, France, but uh, countries such as Canada will open, Australia, Spain, Portugal, a couple of other European countries very soon. Dr. Sal, do you have any other thoughts that you want to add? Well, I think regarding indolent lymphoma, as I mentioned, based on the results that were presented, we already can see that this combination of rituximab, lenalidomide, can represent good options for patients at the time of relapse. The question asked by this trial is whether we should move it on upfront, mm -hmm. but already in relapse, that's an important opportunity, and this will serve also probably as a backbone to add some new compounds, which again are non-chemotherapeutic agent, to be uh, investigated in this field. Thank you very much for sharing progress for this patient population. Dr. Gilles Sal, Professor of Hematology, University of Lyon, comes to us from France. Thank you. Thank you.